So the topic of today's video is regarding awakening and I want to cover this topic because I am aware that the subject of awakening is a very highly confusing subject for many and I want to focus today on how Neville himself saw the subject of awakening and I want to give his own interpretation of it and I really like this interpretation he gives here it's a very very clear one and it's very, very precise. And it's also very easy to interpret for the reader. There isn't any mystical language here. It's very, very down to earth and straightforward, the interpretation he gives here. And I'll just read this quote now. It's from his lecture in 1966, Life is for Acting. And the quote is as follows. If I awake, yes, I realise the whole vast world is mine. And if I were hungry then, why should I tell you? I would slay and eat, for it's all mine. If I awake, if I'm not awake, well then, I play the part of the rich man, the poor man, the beggar man, the thief. If I awake, I am the supreme actor, playing all the parts. So this brings us back to this idea that the world is yourself pushed out again. This is the idea that Neville's talking about here. And this key point he makes here, which I'm going to really focus on here, which is this idea of, if I awake, I am the supreme actor playing all the parts. Well, the, this is the key difference between being ignorant and being awakened. The idea being that you realise you are the supreme actor, not just an actor playing a certain part. And this is a key difference that Neville always wanted us to understand was this idea that you are not this small, limited person in a body, but you are the consciousness that animates the body itself. You are the consciousness that actually animates the whole of the experience you are currently experiencing. And this is the difference between thinking in a very limited way, thinking in a very ignorant way and being awakened. The ignorant view is I am just a body mind. I'm just stuck in this limited part I am playing. I have a certain name. I have a certain identity. I'm from a certain place. Never wanted us to expand this vision far beyond this to make ourselves see in more of an infinite way, shall we say, a very expansive way. And he wanted us to see that we are the consciousness that is animating everything we are experiencing. And this isn't just unique to Neville's teaching. This is something that was shared in all of the ancient scriptures. So this is a really important point to add in here. It's not just something Neville was teaching us. This is, if you read any of the ancient scriptures, they are saying the exact same thing that Neville was saying. Uh, but Neville here gives a very, very beautiful and very simple explanation of this um, concept. And it's coming back to this idea again that when we see reality, when we perceive reality, we should change how we are actually observing reality. So we should observe reality as this supreme actor playing all of the parts, not as this limited individual playing one part. And he, as he says here, he says, if I am not awake, well, then I play the part of the rich man, the poor man, the beggar man, the thief. But he's saying that if you're limited to being the poor man in your mind, then you are assuming that role of the poor man. And of course, that was that is what you will continue to be in this world. And he's saying that if we are playing all of the parts, then we can assume any part that we want to play. And that is a key, key part of his teaching. And this is a key, key pointer towards what spiritual awakening is or what enlightenment is, is this understanding that we are consciousness, not a body, we're not a thing. We are consciousness itself. We are imagination itself, so we can create and become anything we want to be if we can visualise it. We need to identify with the imagination, not the sensory experience. And to conclude today's video, I just want to go back to the first line here, which he says, If I awake, yes, I realise the whole vast world is mine. So this is very similar to what I've been talking about in my previous two videos, where I talk about this idea of the law of hidden cause and visible effect and this is again is very much what this is pointing towards when you realize that you are just witnessing the visible effects of what you are holding within belief wise 
you realise also that this projected world you are witnessing, which is projected from your own belief systems, is your own world. So this is your own world you are currently experiencing. This is your own world that you are currently projecting. And it's your own vision of the world you are currently projecting. And that vision is formed from your belief systems. And I know this sounds quite lavish, this explanation, or it sounds quite out there. But the interesting thing is this view is now shared by many people in the scientific community. There are many great articles, even on the Scientific American, that seem to put forward very similar arguments to the one I'm putting forward here today. So this isn't just something that is mystical or romantic any longer. This is something that is actually being studied in scientific circles. So there's a lot of interesting information out there now on this. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to you today. Thanks very much. Bye for now.